of us are doing a lot of saving recently. I know I have been pouring money into my savings for unforeseen and foreseen circumstances. And I thought I had done a pretty good job. In fact, I thought I had finished baby step three before completing baby step two. <sighs> Not quite. Though I had a lot of money sitting in savings, I realized I needed to recalculate my living expenses to make sure that the savings covered three to six months of those living expenses. I had calculated mine some time ago, but it's been a while and things change. And I figured if I was calculating mine and wanted to be sure of what mine were, maybe you wanted to calculate yours as well and be sure of what your living expenses are as well to make sure that you have enough sitting in savings to cover three to six months of your living expenses. So that's what we're doing in today's video. Let's go. Using Excel, but feel free to whip out a piece of paper, pen, and calculator to do this as well. Of course, I find that with Excel, you can put in formulas that are really helpful. You can make quick adjustments, like I can move things around, and it's really easy to make adjustments every few months or so without having to write everything out or to use some white out if you're using paper, but don't let that stop you. If you have paper, pen, and a calculator, you're good to go. I want to point out an article I read on the mint.com. I'll leave the link in the description below. It's a really good article on what your living expenses are, how much of your income should be spent on your living expenses. And if you don't have enough to cover your living expenses, what you should do. I think it's a great article and wanted to share that. Of course, if you're wanting to know more about this, feel free to just go out and Google it. There's a lot of great resources out there on what your living expenses are. So I have started an Excel worksheet. I'm gonna try to go in some type of order, but again, I'm not gonna be too hard pressed. This is Excel and I can move things around. I can save and undo and all that. So if you want to review the video and then come back and use the final version as the guide for your living expenses list, feel free. Okay, so first off, I've just put a quick header, living expenses, and then I'm updating it today. The expense and the amount, that's pretty simple. What I'm gonna do is actually make this pretty large. And I am going to start off with the big dog, the mortgage. And excuse my typing here. <laughs> the mortgage, my mortgage amount is $845.77, and that's another seven in there. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here because there's one thing that I wanna do along the way that I think will be pretty neat. And that is to calculate the amount as I add it. So the first one is just going to be a sum of everything that I put in here. So what I'm gonna do is equal sum and I am just highlighting just about how many of these I think I may need. Let's go down to 30 and then I'll close that. And so it'll sum it up for me. And so I also want to just give that a dollar sign there. And then, so this will be one month's living expenses. And then what I'm going to do is take this amount and multiply it times three. So equals this amount times three. So that's three months. So, oh my goodness, you see this <laughs> already? three months of living expenses with a mortgage alone, okay? If you don't want to do this, you don't have to, okay? But then of course I am going to take this amount and multiply it times six for six months, okay? So equals this amount times six. And wow, okay? So along the way, as I'm adding things, these numbers will update. So interesting. So the mortgage or home expenses is what I'm going with first. So in this first one, I have my mortgage. Then if you have any home insurance or property taxes, any of those you'll want to list out here if you have to pay those. For me, mine are in escrow, so it's included in my mortgage amount. Um, and I don't have to normally pay anything outside of that. Um, just every once in a while, if my escrow doesn't cover it, I have to pay. I'm going to work on making sure that doesn't happen for next year. But if you have, again, any property taxes or escrow that you have to pay out of pocket, you'll definitely want to add that as well. So then I'm going to move on to utilities. First is my home security. And now some of these aren't going to be in the order, say, of importance or anything, but I am just going to add them. My CPI security. Let's see, and I have my, um, my Duke Energy. 
Um, the latest amount was 57.16, so I'm adding that in. And then the gas, the latest was 68.65. And water sewer. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, just for consistency's sake, keep that capitalized. And that's 44.87 was my last one. Okay, so far we're up over a thousand, 1,056. And making sure I had everything considered, there was a suggestion to add lawn mowing into this category, which I thought was a good suggestion. If you pay for lawn care or anything like that, you'll wanna add it here. At this point, I don't pay for lawn care. I'm definitely planning on having someone else care for the lawn in the future. So I would add that in here. Though at the same time, I feel like if I was in really dire straits, I would probably just go ahead and mow it myself. So again, that's just a suggestion. If you want to add your lawn mowing here, feel free. So next I am going to go on to food and beverages. So you can split these out if you want to groceries and restaurants, but I am just gonna leave them together and put food and I'm just gonna calculate $500, that'll be food and restaurants for me. And of course that can be adjusted. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Next, I'm gonna move on to transportation. For transportation, you'll want to include your car payment. If you have a car payment, I paid mine off last March, I wanna say. So I don't have a car payment, but you'll wanna list out all of your auto loan payments and then your auto insurance. And my insurance amount is, what is it, 8389 Any other transportation costs, like public transportation um, for your bus pass or Metro card, anything like that. And then also gasoline for the car. So I'm budgeting about 100 a month. And I don't normally use that much gas, but I like to have it set aside, of course. So let's see what we're looking like so far. We're over 10,000 for the sixth month. So we know we at least have to save that amount, but let's keep going. Any other transportation, feel free to add it here. And let's see. So for clothing, you'll wanna consider any clothing you may need for work. You'll wanna think about seasonality here. If your children normally need a winter coat or a summer clothes or back to school clothes, then you'll want to include it here. For clothing, I don't really, think I need a ton of clothing. So I'm gonna leave a placeholder here, but I'm not gonna give that an amount. I'll just have to see how things go along and if I need more clothing in the future. So let's actually decrease here a bit so we can see this running amount. And then what else do we have here? How about healthcare, your insurance premiums? My insurance premium is taken out of my paycheck. How about any co-pays that you think you may need to make available coming up here in the near future. So you'll want to include something for co-pays, possibly um, any procedures that you have coming up. Of course, you all know I got some dental work that I'm saving for. So you'll want to indicate that here as well. Any healthcare added here. All right, how about any other personal care? Um, a gym membership, so uh, Planet Fitness, the gym membership is 2206. So I'm gonna add that in here. Oh, the chiropractor. So in January, I started going to the chiropractor. So I am going to add that. And that is $69. Right now I am paying HSN for my Fitbit. So I am going to add that in though that actually may be done within uh, the next couple months or so, but I am going to add that as well. Oh, there's a few things that I missed. Now this is what I love about Excel because <laughs> there's some things that I miss. I just jotted down all of my bills, but I didn't put them in any particular order. So I'm gonna go back up to utilities, though honestly, I mean, if I had to let some of these things go, it would be okay, but I'm just gonna go back up and before food, I'm going to cut, so I just highlighted and cut, and I think there's, say, three things that I wanna add, so I'm gonna give space for three items, and one is my mobile phone. 
That bill is $35. Let's see, Spectrum Internet. That is $60 a month. And then I also want to make a place for, I mean, this isn't like super important, <laughs> but Netflix. <laughs> okay, so Netflix, it's in there. It's like when you first started budgeting, you threw everything in there because you just needed to get this done. You needed to make sure you had that in your budget. And then you realize, man, I, I may not want to keep that. I'll scratch that off the list. I could sacrifice that. So again, with your living expenses, throw it all in there. Hopefully you're not at a point where you're having to pare down to manage these living expenses right now. And hopefully you're just thinking about saving for this in the future. And it's not an immediate need that you pare down to only your living expenses. But this gives you an opportunity to see that there may be some things that you wouldn't mind giving up because you are having to save so much to afford them in the future. So keep that in mind. But again, I think it's a good idea to just go ahead and add everything in there and then you can always deduct later. All right, the name of the game is making adjustments here. Okay, so let's see here. Um, another thing that I want to add is it doesn't really have a place and it is a legal service that I have. Let's spell that right. It is $17 a month. So I'd like to keep that up. I don't know. I may evaluate whether or not I want to keep that in the future. But for now, that is a part of my living expenses. Let's see. I think this is rounding out to the end. So of course, I want to add in my giving. And then also any debt payments. So here's a little lecture. If you don't have any debt, you don't have to consider paying for it when you're considering your living expenses, okay? But I currently have debt, so I'm preaching to the choir here. And right now I have the blue green and that payment is 165.74. So I will account for that as a part of my living expenses moving forward. Now, some other things you'll wanna consider is any other insurances you have, if you have um, health insurance that you pay out of pocket, life insurance that you pay out of pocket, you'll wanna make sure that's added in here. Any car maintenance, I think is a really good idea. Just make sure that you have something for your car. In fact, I think I am going to add an item for car maintenance. And normally the car is pretty good. I would say every few months I need to get an oil change. It's about 40 or $50. So I may save $50 a month just in case something else happens. So car maintenance, if you provide childcare or child support and any other personal things, if you like manicure, pedicure, estimate how much that is every month, massage, hair care, any of that stuff, any medical procedures, any medicines, any equipment that you need, any services. I'm just trying to give you an idea of anything that you may want to add. And then of course your sinking funds, if you plan to save outside of this large emergency fund for anything else, say you want to establish your three to six months living expenses, but then you just want to keep your sinking funds on the side and put into those so you never touch this living expenses. I mean, that's really ambitious and that is a great idea. So you may want to consider adding a line for your sinking funds. Okay, so we got down to line 24. That formula that I created to go to line 30 should have covered everything we have listed in here. So on the way to the top, I'm gonna highlight this because I wanna change the format here to make it a dollar format. And when we get to the top, we will see just how much the one month, three and six month living expenses amounts amount to. Okay, so you can see here, and I just hit the dollar sign up there to reformat these. Now you can also go back in and kind of color code these for housing, food, transportation, if you'd like. So my one month living expenses is $2,653.05. Three months living expenses is close to 8,000. Six months living expenses is almost 16,000. So if I were to save three to six months living expenses, I know I would save between this amount, at least this amount in my larger savings. So 
I like this. I mean, it's daunting, you know, no lie to be totally transparent, but I like the opportunity to see exactly what that amount is. And even if I just remember that my living expenses are about 2,600 a month, at least I have an idea of what that amount is. And I'm not thinking, oh, it's just, you know, a thousand, it's my mortgage and this and that. It's actually a more substantial amount whenever I add in all the other things that I would want to pay and want to save for. So there you go. Again, you can come back in here and make any changes whatsoever. And this recalculates for you. If you're using pen and paper, hey, grab that white out, make your adjustments. It's perfectly fine. And so another thing that I'm going to do is because I had already started saving for my three to six months living expenses, I had made a goal within 2020 to save at least $5,000. So when we all started saving, that was my initial goal. I hit that goal and exceeded it. Yeah. So then I said, well, how about I start saving towards my three to six months living expenses? And that's what I have done as well. So the last thing I'm going to add is how much I have saved already and how much is left to save to meet my six months living expenses. Now, if your goal is to meet three months, then go for that. But hey, let's go for the gusto. So what I have saved, so I'm just gonna put here, so far is $8,078.62. And then what is left to save is the difference between the six months and this amount that I have saved. And I have $7,839.68 left to save to get to six months. Okay. Oops. I'm really proud of myself. I have three months living expenses saved and that's really exciting. I mean, it feels great to have that amount saved and I know just how close I am or how far away <laughs> to get to my six month living expenses. And that's really exciting. It's always good to know. So let me know in the comments what you thought of this exercise. What are some things that you would add that I didn't get around to adding? Did your number surprise you? Let me know. Hopefully you got some value out of the video. Either way, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll chat with you next time. Bye.